All right. Crazy Monkeys. Super duper. Crazy sale. Thinking outside the box here. We're coming up with a new product. A couple of new products here. We got this refrigerator right here. See this refrigerator? Oops, it's over here. That uh, refrigerator. $2,000. Lifetime guarantee. 48 years. And at the end of the time, and 48 years, this guarantee is like no other guarantee ever. This is, get, come down and get one of my refrigerators for $2,000, 48 years. If anything, we'll give you the new technology. If the new technology comes out, we'll, if it breaks down, we'll get you a new one. When it, no repair time, we'll just freaking send the new refrigerator to your house. At the end of the 48 years, $4,000 back. I told you, it's crazy. It's crazy. The 100 monkey has gone insane, but we've got a new business model. I'll tell you what. We'll give you an offer. You can either buy this crazy refrigerator for $2,000 or you can buy it over here for $1,000. Same exact deal, but at the end of the time, we don't give you back any money. All right? 48 year guarantee, anything, fix or repair, any, all that stuff. It's lifetime guarantee, 48 years, but at the end of the time, nothing you get back. Nada. Okay. So you, you'll, you'll get nothing back. Or you can get the thing for $2,000 and for it. Okay. And then here's the other thing that, uh, that we're going to do. We're going to revolutionize the life insurance industry. We're going to give you a policy for 48 years, $25,000, if you manage to uh, kick off during that time for any reason uh, after two years, because uh, there's a suicide clause. But after two years, uh, for any reason, you die $25,000. And you know what? One-time payment of $2,000. Oops, $2,000. $1,000. $2,000 payment, 48 year premium or level term. You pay once $2,000 up front and we cover you for 48 years for $25,000. And at the end of the time, we'll even give you, if you don't die in 48 years, we'll give you your money back twice. We'll give you double your money. Or you can buy the thing for $1,000, get a 48 year policy, same thing, $25,000. If you die for any reason, we give you 25 grand. And at the end of the time, we give you a dick back. We give you a butt kiss. We give you nothing. So you either pay $2,000 or $1,000. But at the end of the 48 years, you get same coverage, same exact coverage. You get your, double your money back. So I asked my little boys, what, which one would they rather have? Well, of course, they'd rather have this one where you get money back at the time. I mean, it's silly to have the thing and then not get any money back, right? That's the way they'll sell it to you. They'll make shiny brochures. You know why? And they'll, and they'll train their sales force to tell you that that's, this is the best idea and you better do it this way and so on. You know why? Because they make money. Because people are ignorant of the rule of 72 and they are ignorant of mathematics. Now, I make this video because they just raised the fucking interest rates on student loans and people just don't get it. They went from 5 to 10% basically. Um, student loans, they make, I don't know, it's $51 billion. I don't know, you're going to have to look at the numbers. But it's like the four largest banks. This is how much money they make off of students, off of loaning students money. They're not doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. It's, debt is enslavement. But anyway, all right, so here. They figured it out with the Banana Republics. Work so well, they brought it home to the United States. And then they just make sure you get dumbed down in school, then everything's happy. So here was a fun exercise with my little boys. Took forever. I have it on video, but I'm not going to post the video. Um, the rule of 72 says, if I divide the percentage rate, that my percentage rate, into the number uh, 72, it'll tell me how long it takes my money to double. So at 3%, it will take 24 years for my money to double. At 6%, 12. At 12%, 12 6. And at 18%, 4. Then I used to work for a company. We were not allowed to show more than 18% in our figures. Even though at the time there were mutual funds back in the 80s and 90s that had 30-year track records of getting, you know, 30%, 20%. Even right now, there are, there are mutual funds out there that are getting, you know, that have track records where they're getting an average annualized return of 20%, even in all the craziness that's going on. And if you have some kind of fund manager or some kind of, you know, financial planner that's worth his salt and not just trying to make a commission, they can move you from, and you could, anyway. So... The average person just doesn't get that, well, if I get 6% and I get 12%, then I should double my money, right? And if I have 6% and I get 18%, then I'll triple my money. So let's just start off. Here's my $1,000. Because here's, here's what I do. Remember the, uh, just a second ago, I was talking about my crazy new business button, the new paradigm we're going to change, that, right? 
Okay, so here's what I'd do, being clever. I would go and buy uh, that same, those same two products for $1,000 from somebody that's offering them for $1,000, perhaps a reinsurer or you know, a wholesaler, uh, and then sell it to you for $2,000. Take the $1,000 and invest it. Let's see what happens. Now, especially on the insurance. On the refrigerator, not so much, but even you could still see that. But on the insurance where I don't have to worry about you know, added costs of like, you know, buying a new refrigerator or replacing it or anything like that. It's just a piece of paper that sits. Look at this. If I can just get 3% on my money, well, I break even. If I was a dummy and I just, right? That's my, if I just get 3%, I, I get, uh, I'll be able to pay you your $4,000 back at the end of 48 years because my money will double every 24 years. And oops, this one somehow got... I put that on here. Look, that's 1,000 turns into 2,000, and that's after 24 years. Okay. Oh, let me pick it up. All right, so what if I got 6%? Well, look, now I've got $16,000. So I just made $12,000 on a deal if I could just get 6%. But what if I could get 12%? You think financial institutions can figure out how to get 12%? Yeah, in their sleep. And by the way, they borrow the money at nothing. Uh, oh, look, it's 200 and quarter million dollars. So I pay you your four, measly $4,000 and I make a quarter of a million dollars over the 48 year period, right? So, oh, that $2,000 give you back your 4,000 or give you back nothing, see how it works. Now, what if I could get 18%? Do they make 18% on their credit cards? Anybody had their interest rates raised from 20, from 18 to 24 to 28 to 30? I had a gas card. I didn't. I never use it. I just use it once in a great while just to keep it because I used to have a bunch of gas cards and they all, you know, got suspended or they canceled because I never used the damn things. You know, I had a golf card. There's no golfs in Hawaii, so I couldn't ever use it. I had a 76 card for a while. There were no 76 cards in Hawaii. So right now I have a shell card and I just use it for... Anyway, there's no balance on it. I charge like 10 bucks once in a while just so it stays in the system, right? I think that card right now is like 28% or something like it. It's crazy if you if you uh, carry a balance on that or if you cash advance. And on top of that, there's a cash advance fee, but we won't get into that. All right, so 18%. So you think that, oh, it's a quarter million dollars at 12%. Look at just 6% more. Now we're up to $2 million. Understand that. Your money doubling every four years at 18%. 1,000 turns to 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1 million, 24,000, 2 million, 48,000. So look, I can easily afford to fix and repair your refrigerator once I get this thing going because it's not going to work out perfectly if I have to take money out and so forth. But if I have an insurance policy, it certainly works out perfectly. Now, do you understand what happened when they doubled the student? You know how much more money these guys are going to make? You understand these fuckers want bailouts? You think that they can't get a thousand dollar aggregate of money sitting at 18 percent? Right? When just all those different clients, all those different accounts where they want minimum balances and all the different insurance policy and all the stuff that's out there. You think that they can't get a thousand dollars to sit for 48 years? They've been doing this for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years in the United States. Now, 18 percent? Woohoo! That's great. And that's just one. Imagine, okay, so imagine just some pissant little southern insurance company with 10,000 policyholders. Multiply. Start doing some multiplication, guys. Just look at this number. Right? Even just 10 times. Now 20 times. How about 100 times? Move the decimal over, or move it two places. Starts turning into billions of dollars. Every building in every city in the United States, the biggest ones, the tallest ones, are owned by financial companies, insurance companies. There was a time here, right here on Maui, all of our five-star hotels, all of our biggest hotels, all of our fine hotels on Kanapali Beach and Wailea, all owned by insurance conglomerates, every damn one of them. I mean, yeah, they are owned by you know Sheraton and so forth, but who owns those companies? See, when we talk about corporations, you dumbasses, when we talk about corporations, we're not talking about you know, guys that make pencils and and cameras and and computers and stuff like that. We're talking about the banking institutions and everything that they own. The bankers own all the oil companies. The bankers own the insurance companies. The bankers own, right? Those corporations. And then they set up corporations and the corporations and they own corporations and it get right? And we have a country 
for the corporations, by the corporations, owned by corporations, corporations get their way. And our government no longer makes laws to restrain them. The corporations write the laws. They have been corrupted utterly and completely. The Department of Education, the Transportation Security Agency, all of them have been corrupted completely. For FDA, name it, right? EPA, name the corp. It's they have been utterly corrupted. Making government bigger and giving them more money isn't fixing the problem. Putting a Democrat or Republican in isn't fixing the problem. Now, just for fun, oh, look, and here's this has been written on. These are little kids. No. <laughs> little kids doing third power algebra. This is an eight year old, by the way, factoring x to the third, 7x squared, 13x, and 3. But that's not what's important. What's important is what if you get 24%? Now, Here's the thing, people are like, in the perfect world, you'd have, to, you'd have to sit there and not touch the money for 48 years. Correct, they can do that. They have no problem with that. You don't think that there's an... Anyway, look, look how much money it is at 24%. Now your money is doubling every three years. Now look. Like I said, we weren't even allowed to show this. That's $32 million, starting with $1,000. Just look, just do the damn math. And these guys want bailouts? These guys need our tax dollars? These guys borrow at 0% and they get these kind of returns on a regular basis? And they need our money. They need bailouts. And then when they double the interest rates on students, people let it go. No, there was some outcry, sure, but did, did it double? That's the bottom line. Yes, they doubled the rates because they weren't making enough money. Now they're only making 10%. But think about that. If they can get, if they can take the money and get 24% over a 48 period, you think that they can't get to, you think that that's not possible for, you know, the largest banks and insurance companies to rig it so that they get 24%. Have you seen credit card rate? Have you seen, I mean, what they've been able to, right? <laughs> they'll rig the market, they'll do, anyway. Because the, 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 when I used to sell mutual funds, Fidelity, Magellan, Pioneer, some of the old guys, MFS, Oppenheimer, and uh, name it, all these old Franklin funds, there are plenty of funds in there that get 24% or better annualized return over years and years. Now, of course, for us, past results are no guarantee of you know, future results. But for them, uh, they just rig the market. They've been caught red-handed, repeatedly rigging the markets. Over and over again, they get busted rigging the markets. So they know where to go to get 24%. This is starting with just $1,000. What if they start with $10,000? Do the damn math. What if they start with $100,000? You think these guys can't do, right? You don't even have a clue how huge that shadow economy is. Do the damn math. Sit down and put some zeros there. That now do this. What if they can get a thousand dollars and sit there from just a thousand different people? Now move the decimal places. What if they can right? And they've been doing this more than forty-eight years, guys. What if they can do the math? What if they can get a return like this and they can do it where they get uh, you know ten thousand dollars from more than say a few hundred people? Start right. They own our government lock, stock, and barrel. I try to explain this to physicists. I try to explain this to, to lots of different people. The slush money, the money that they hide, the money that's sitting in offshore accounts that nobody knows about is more than enough to pay off our Congress a thousand times over. When we talk, start talking about trillions of dollars, people can't even wrap their minds around trillions of dollars. There, is, there are very, very few men that are incorruptible in any government anywhere. One of the men I have a, 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 some respect for is Ron Paul because I, I believe that they, anyway, they, they had a difficult time giving him money. Like they knew, I mean, it was pretty well known on Capitol Hill that that was a guy he just he didn't bother with because he wouldn't take the money. But that's not the case in most cases. And then, you know, he definitely had some information on what stocks to buy when it came to silver and gold. But anyway, the idea is the, the government and our uh, corporations that rule our government make so much money, it's ridiculous. And now they're going to start asking you for austerity. It's coming our way. 
Same thing you see over there in Europe and Greece and so forth is coming home. They're going to start telling the unions they need to take, you know, cuts in their benefits. Maybe not the police, right? Because they need those guys. But even then, you're you'll, you'll, you're going to start seeing these guys are going to get cutbacks in law enforcement. Already, we have places where you know the response time for the, the police is you know hours before they'll show up. Um, but in places like California and and uh, other places where they tell you that they can't afford whatever the hell it is, and you got to pay more tax or you got to accept fewer services, they got to turn off the lights in the libraries, they got to turn up right. It's nonsense. It's utter and complete nonsense. All right, there's that. That was 15 minutes. I hope you got it. Like I said, get a piece of paper, understand the rule of 72, and start fooling around. Just get a get a clue. You gotta understand how money works. You gotta understand the Federal Reserve now is on a little campaign trying to say that we're not a private corporation. We're semi. We're kind of. We're quasi governmental. We're not. No, they're they're a government agency. No, no. It's private, owned by private bankers, loaning the money to us at interest. Now, and I could do another presentation where, okay, let's change the change it the other way, where the numbers are huge and the interest rates are small, and what happens over time. But anyway, we'll just learn some damn math. Um, the the students are being screwed. It is slavery. It is these people. I know people that have been paying on their loans for 30 years and it hasn't gone down by much because they don't understand the mortgagization. <sighs> e pluribus unum. That's it. Oh wait, one last thing. One last thing. People losing their minds. These cops that shot the dog in LA and there's been other ones where they shot the dog. People getting death threats, right? People calling in, threatening to kill these cops. Threaten, right? Get, you, we get you on the street, we'll shoot you for shooting the dog, right? I'll put the link down there. How about the uh, nigga in the back of the squad car with his hands behind his back, handcuffed, shot in the back of the head? It was suicide. How about the guy, shot, right? another nigga with his hands behind his back, shot in the back of the head? Right? Witnesses on a, pl on a platform, shot. those guys receiving death threats? People losing their mind over that? Oh, but to shoot a dog? Anyway, e pluribus unum, get out there and educate.